Hello, we're talking about recreation. I'm Terrence McMahon. Today I have Dennis and Kathy Lang, the authors of Everything Matters. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Thanks for having it's us. It's great to be here. Great. Really great. You, you know the theme of the, of the show is about recreating themselves, and I was lucky enough to get a copy of your book, one of the first ones that came out as soon as you, uh, you uh, told me it was uh, published. And I went through it, and it's in the book. The book reads how a corporate overachieving couple found real truth, and how you can too. So it's a little unfair because I know you guys from before a little bit, but <laughs> talk, talk, to pe- talk to people a little bit. Uh, normally, normally I wouldn't do this, but I know I know how you met. But talk how, talk to everyone how you met as a little bit of a backdrop to the story of your journey. Oh, how we met? Yeah. Ah. Ah. <laughs> do you want my version or Kathy's version? A little bit of both. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to start? All right. Well, I'll start. Uh, we were both okay. working in Toledo, Ohio in corporate jobs. And Dennis had just started working there fresh out of grad school. So he was young and I was young. We were both like 24 years old or so. And Pups. He, pups. he had the cubicle next to me in the office. <clears throat> so one day we were riding the elevator up to the office at 8.30 in the morning and he was on the elevator with me. And I thought, well, I should introduce myself. So I introduced myself and he introduced himself and then we went to our cubicles and finished out our work and then the next day it was a Friday I invited him to go to happy hour and then the next day I'm giving you the short version the next day was Saturday and he uh, called me up and asked me if I wanted to go out and so we went on a date Saturday night and then Sunday he actually moved in with me <laughs> so it was a quick run yeah it was that fast <laughs> wow but you know Terry uh, as you know you know Coming from UMass, yeah, we're, we're, we have this in common. <laughs> we're two fine products of the University of Massachusetts. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Right. And um, for me, as an engineering student, for a woman like this to stop me in the elevator and say hi, that was huge. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, lock it in. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I figured I need to follow on this uh, real fast. Yeah. So, so it's kind of a world. But it was it was a complete. Uh, there was like no doubt. You know, mm-hmm. it was like that. Cool, yeah. So. And the title of your book and the, and the subtitle speaks to itself, but talk to people about uh, a little bit about your journey into traditional corporate America, and then you had an epiphany, it would seem. So yeah. that'd be very interesting for people to know about. Yeah. Well, I think what happened is when we got involved in our jobs and our career path and so on, naturally we we were very good at it. We, we um, Each one of us in our own roles in the various... Uh, jobs that we had were very good at kind of observing the opportunities, very effective at our jobs. And so what happened is opportunity came our way. And one thing led to another. We gained more and more responsibility. With responsibility came direct reports, people reporting to you, um, also lots of travel, uh, international travel as well. And so what happened is that we found ourselves in a place where we both as a couple we're very successful at our jobs, and in no way, shape, or form are we anti-corporate or anti-job. We're just, we became out of balance. And what we realized is that we had um, very, very good 401ks. I was very proud of my my frequent flyer program (laughs) points and all of that. And we were traveling the world, which on the one hand was great experience, and we're thankful to that. But on the other hand, what happened is over a period of time, those little signs of stress over the years started to really kind of nip away or start to take their toll on us. And so eventually, um, you know, for whatever reason, we just looked at one another and we started realizing that we were enjoying our lives together, but we weren't completely happy. So, you know, we started to, you know, make our way to take different vacations and so forth to try to find balance that way or we were trying to you know, buy the bigger house or buy the new car or whatever it was to try to find you know other ways of making ourselves happy right. so. That's right. so where do you think you found it <laughs> well surprisingly for us on the yoga mat yeah. uh, we found yoga in the year 2000 and at first we were long distance runners and mm-hmm. we were taking yoga as stretching and over time, the, the principles of yoga, we started really digging deep into those and learning different things about the study of yoga and its philosophy. And then one day, I turned to Dennis and I said, would you do your job if it weren't for the money? And 
he had to like stop and think about it for a minute and be really yeah. truthful with himself and he said no I wouldn't so at that point we decided that maybe we needed to make a career change yeah it was kind of kind of interesting because when we first ran into yoga at the Miraval Spa Resort out in Tucson um, I thought yoga <laughs> you know I had this very funny assumption of what I thought yoga was and it totally totally changed it was like a seed was planted and over the course of a period of time it took a while for you know that to really kind of germinate and get rooted within us but there are these principles uh, within the yoga philosophy that it was kind of strange it was like you know below the surface below the skin these things just started to work on us, and that led to the crescendo question. <laughs> you know, and I, I had to be honest with myself, and it was really a big deal for me because I was very much uh, into my title and into my role and my career. You know, in the typical male thing, you know, Terry, how yeah. that is, it, you get caught up in yeah. that. It's, yeah. I mean, in a way, it's like an addiction. Yeah. I loved my international travel. I loved all of those things, and truly, I was out of balance. So when she said, well, would you do this if it weren't for the money? <laughs> it kind of sat me back. I was like, well. Interesting question. Interesting yeah, yeah, question. Yeah. And truthfully, no. So so you figured <clears throat> out, I mean, what, what I think a lot of people would ask you, I, I always talk to you, uh, you know, offline about the questions. I think, you know, my journey, I think they're going to ask me one question. It's always one different question. Right. And the, I know what the question would be for me uh, mm -hmm. is, First of all, I know a little bit why, but how did you do this? How did you make the cha the, tra the change, mm -hmm. financial transformation, the yeah. the bridging? Mm -hmm. That's interesting for people. It takes a lot of courage. Yeah. It does. In the day we both were working for the same company, on the day we resigned, we both resigned on the same day. People were coming to our offices saying, "You got to be nuts to <laughs> to walk away <laughs> from two nice salaries." And, and especially you know, family. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> our families yeah. both thought. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was accused of having a midlife crisis. And I said, <laughs> How can I be having a midlife crisis when I'm doing it with my wife? <laughs> but that actually turned yeah. out to be like the genesis or the beginning of an interest that people started to come to us wondering about how did you do this, mm. which led to this, which led to the book. Yeah. Because a lot of people and a lot of couples or partners face the opportunity in which change is required, whether it's due to you know, being caught up in the corporate world or some other issue or, or addiction or whatever, right. change has to be made. And the problem is, is how do you do it? What's the strategy? But how is the strategy going to work when you're dealing with the lives of two people right. as a unit? Right. And that became really the fundamental reason why we started to write this book. Um, it was about kind of a response to different people who would ask us, well, how did you do that? Because yeah, you literally had, because I was a financial planner for 25 <clears throat> years. So that's called yeah. a, it's called a cliff. Usually people get that when ah. someone dies. Their yeah. income oh. stops. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you know, you, <laughs> your income is now zero. Wow, yeah. now yeah. you're freaking me out. I didn't yeah. think about cliff. <laughs> you know, I, I think, I think human, <laughs> human, beings, <laughs> human beings have a horrific history of assessing their own uh, potential. Mm -hmm. they, they install these limitations. Otherwise, no one would have ever gotten on a boat and left uh, Italy or yeah. Spain to go to the New World. They thought the boat would fall off or no one would ever gotten an airplane. Yeah. Or you know, all the inventions that were so amazing would never have happened. So, right. uh, you know, one of the, one of the, our principles is, you know, knowing yourself. Mm -hmm. and, uh, in the other world, they said, know your enemy too. You know, yeah. The enemy in this case was you didn't have a work, you didn't have a job. So, yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about that because I know, uh, you, you know, because I've written a couple of books too. I want to also visit on on the uh, on co writing a book. Mm, so, yes, yes. So, yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, fast forward. <laughs> it's, hard enough, yeah. it's hard enough to write it at all. So yeah, you yeah. guys got double writer's block. Yeah. It's, it's, and, and then doing it without, you know, yeah. financial issues and financial yeah. struggles, yeah. Uh, if any. Uh, but talk about that a little bit. Yeah, well, Dennis, um, we actually got the idea about 10 years ago to write the book, and <clears throat> which is one of those things that at the time we were ambassadors for Lululemon Athletica, which is a clothing mm -hmm. company for uh, yoga apparel, and being an ambassador for them, you wear their clothes and you 
you know, promote their products. And they it's gave like a us a small endorsement contract. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're not talking s- like, you know, Nike. <laughs> I went like, there last week. You need to take out a small mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wonderful. I love yeah, their clothes, yeah. though. Wonderful company. Yeah, their clothes are great. Well, they last forever. Yeah. 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 So, that's a whole one story. of the things they gave us as ambassador was a t shirt. It said, My goal is, and it had like a blank you could fill in. This was over 10 years ago. Dennis wrote on his t shirt, Write a book. And so, you know, over the years, we'd wear this t shirt and he'd say, Oh, yeah. Still thinking about that book. And so, you know, the book idea just kept coming around and coming around, but we weren't really actively doing anything about it. He would write some notes. I would jot notes, put them in a file, you know, the typical thing. Yeah, and I yeah. eventually got a spiral notebook and started to write out some ideas. And, yeah, and you then, know, it was very casual, very right. yeah. kind of passive. And, oh my God, I don't know if we really want to do this, that <laughs> kind of a thing. And then um, <clears throat> about three years ago, he said, I think I'm going to start like typing all this information. In. So we yeah. would take the laptop and every now and then he'd get inspired and he'd go, you know, sit in a big easy chair and just start working on it. And so he was just jotting down a bunch of ideas and information and things that would come to him and mm-hmm. things that we cover sometimes in our own training when we do teacher trainings mm-hmm. now and teach our classes. And so he started all that. And then after a while, I was like, I need to jump in on this. And so <laughs> he got it to a place where he had pretty much gotten all his ideas in there. And so then I started looking through it, and because, you know, we're two different people with two different perspectives on yeah. things, I started thinking, well, I need my own voice in this. It can't right. be all Dennis. So I massaged some of the stuff that he had put in, but then in the book we had these sections where you'll see Dennis's name and his thoughts and then my name and my thoughts. And So, so it becomes it, like a dialogue. Yeah, yeah. it gave us yeah. a chance to both include our thoughts and ideas without it mm-hmm. like, being too much. Yeah, it, to one. As, I, as I went through that, I, I connected with the uh, Point Counterpoint. I also taken your classes many times. Right. Yeah, so right. That's the, I don't know what I call it, good cop, bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for those of you watching, Dennis teaches usually the first half, and Kathy teaches the second half, right. and they're very different in, in their own <laughs> yeah. ways. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. a great, uh, great combination. Um, so the, you know, going through the book, uh, uh, you know, what, what was the? I know how much time it takes to write it, just to write a book. Mm-hmm. Forget about picking the cover and the layout yeah. and the editor. Yeah, and everyone's got an opinion. I'm sure you've got a lot of opinions. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah. what what was the one thing that you can both tell me that you learned from putting your life's work on paper for the world to see? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, that, <laughs> that is a scary thought because we, you know, now that this is out in the public. It's very interesting to know that so many people are reading about things which, in many cases, much many of our family don't know <laughs> some of these details about <laughs> us, which is really kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, I think it's. I think it was just another channel for us to be authentic mm-hmm. and to share the truth of yoga. And how it touched and changed our lives in such a positive way. We wanted to have a channel that could be in a more permanent way, that could be in a broader sense used. Yeah. So yeah. the book really kind of came together in that case or that yeah. way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's a. Uh, I'm just writing down and looking at a bunch of my old. I have so many questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> so. One, one question I would have it would be about, uh, it doesn't sound like you guys have any, an issue with you know, anxiety, depression, some of the common issues where 20 to 30% of our nation right now is medicated and 50% identified as being depressed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, I mean, this is, this is a really hot topic because no one seems to have the answer. You know, they have a, a 20 million people are addicted to something. Uh, Unhappiness is like a epidemic right now. Right. So, what type of? You know, this is a two-part question. The first question is, how can someone like yourself or me, even, mm-hmm. who's also left corporate America, connect with yoga, meditation, and mindfulness? What What are the What are the? the I was going to say three, but what's the first thing someone would do to? What What would they experience if they were to go put themselves on a yoga mat? What, you know, with that. Yeah, well, it's interesting because uh, there's so many studies out there that show yoga and meditation are good for depression, anxiety, lower your blood pressure, improve your health, improve your happiness, your compassion, your empathy, all of those things. Scientific proof on that. Mm-hmm. Most people avoid the yoga mat because, 
lots of reasons. There's excuses for everything that's good for you in life, right? Mm -hmm. So excuses, I'm not flexible, I don't have time, you know, all of these things come into play. But if someone will just just put all those excuses aside, find a local studio, get on the mat, find a gentle beginner's class, something, and just go experience it. Don't worry about how good you are or if you can touch your toes. I mean, Dennis, it took him four years of steady yoga practice to touch his toes because he was a long-distance runner. So, you know, just... Just try it out, and and I think yoga is a, an amazing practice, and it's something you can do your whole life. Not like so many other things are so called fitness things. And yoga is really not a fitness thing. Yeah, because I was in your, one of your classes, and you you were this is after I had read the, the chapter on what, what gets you is when people say yoga is really good workout. <laughs> right. Because right, right. there was an art, a famous article by one of our peers at UMass. Uh, I think it was Dr. Lazar. Yes, oh, yeah, Sarah Lazar. Lazar. Yeah, she right, talked right. about how she was also a runner. And yes, had, yes. It's very now it's famous. She's a neurologist and yep. did all kinds of studies. So share yeah. share the science because I'm fascinated by the science of, of and, and the potential embedded in all this mm-hmm. and why and, and why people are so suppressed. It seems yeah. in getting out of their own way and how yoga and meditation because it's worked for me. Mm-hmm. That's why I invited you in. I mean, I've had a connection to your class, but right. I also had an incredible. Like it was the first time I tried it. it like this is how I now exercise my mind and my body for the yeah. rest of my life. Yeah. So, what? We'll talk a little bit about the science and, okay. and like it's known science that, that this will help you become more, mm-hmm. you know, more happy. And more. Yeah, yeah. As Kathy was alluding to, there are there are several and many different studies that look at yoga and meditation and mindfulness from several different angles and views, clinical studies and so forth. I like the ones that really tapped into me, which would be Sarah Lazar's work, where and you had mentioned her. What I liked about it is that she was the first one that really, I think, looked into using functional MRI studies, where she really examined the effect on the brain. And the first thing that I got out of that was tremendous upside. <laughs> you know, the typical thing where we yeah. age and we get in the 50s, the gray matter is shrinking yeah, yeah. and things are getting a little bit more hard to remember and so <laughs> forth. And she has the data to show that meditation and mindfulness practices actually grow the gray matter back. And she also showed that those areas of the brain which are all about compassion and empathy, they also grow. Mm-hmm. And then those parts of the brain which have to do with the fight or flight response that trigger that we have in the corporate world or that trigger that we face when we're getting on the on-ramp and somebody cuts you off and you want to make them number one in your, in your, in your life and so forth, that fight-or-flight response portion of the brain gets smaller. So I think for me what happened is that was that helped me understand part of the reason why you know we were being affected by this thing called yoga. Mm-hmm. It was a complete... <clears throat> Complete surprise. I mean, we didn't see it coming. I thought we were going into something that was just another fitness program. You know, when we were in Richmond, oh, Richmond, Virginia, when we lived up there for 12 years, we were in a gym, we hired a trainer, we had a guy who was showing us how to lift all kinds of weight, and do all kinds of things. But in, in as long distance runners, there's an aspect of that that's meditative too. Mm-hmm. But there's something different about that yoga mat that mm-hmm. starts to tap into these other aspects that her research and similar research has shown that we start to really completely remold the brain physically. That blew our minds. Right. But then I think also we delve we delve deeper, and of course, of the two of us, I'm the nerd. So <laughs> sure. I started to do a lot of investigation and studies about the nature of the mind, and I realized that as I started to understand more about the mind, I realized and I looked at myself critically. I kind of like used us as our own little experimental uh, baseline to see, oh, so this is how you tick. And I actually had these sorts of addictions or issues or habits or patterns all wrapped around who I was, what I was, how many frequent flyer points, what was our 401k value, that, 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 that. Those are also patterns and worries and stressors that eventually led to me being on blood pressure medication, 45 pounds heavier, and on Singular, because I was pre-asthmatic, when I really hit my peak yeah. professionally. Yeah. But it. physically, I was really not so well. That's a great transition to my next question. Uh, is 
you, you know, you, the, the role of nutrition. I, mean, I know you both yeah. have a very specialized diet. You do a ton of research, and we and we all we all live here in Jacksonville, so it's difficult to find yeah, yeah. Organic, true organic food uh, yeah, true. In, in restaurants, especially. I eat out a lot. So talk about the impact nutrition would have on, on the things, these, these unhealthy connections people have that carry around stress. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I myself, I lost 120 pounds on hypertension, yeah. pre-diabetic, mm-hmm. uh, awful connections. But what I, I, my, my, my belief is, um, and I'd like to hear your opinion on nutrition, I think it's, it's a powerful thing that gets overlooked pretty, pretty frequently. Yeah. Yeah. How did it help you? Well... Like Dennis said, he was overweight and um, physically not doing very well. And so I had been vegetarian for about 25 years. And then about 13 years ago, we ran into a situation where we were listening to a speaker talk. And he was uh, really, really pushing a vegan diet. Mm -hmm. He was talking about all the benefits of being vegan and plant-based diet and all of that. And that particular um, discussion, like, really hit Dennis, really did. And he turned to me and he said, I think we need to go vegan like now and i was really surprised because here was the carnivore guy it was like cold turkey i mean yeah me the carnivore yeah we came home and we gutted the kitchen yeah so so (laughs) gutted the kitchen we threw out everything that wasn't vegan of course i I would only cook vegetarian at home so it was only cheese and ice cream and you know things like that and and so we just made the transition that day and we felt so much better and he lost weight got off all his medications and um, still to this day, we remain vegan 13 years later. You guys are incredibly impulsive. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're decisive. Yeah, we make I, a decision we do our stick homework. with it. I, I was reading a, uh, a, a blog by a, a famous, I think he's a psychologist, but he, he said something I don't necessarily agree with, but I, I can identify with it. He said that people over 25, mm-hmm. so if you want to change someone, you're going to change them before they're 25. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Unless... They get medical scare, mm-hmm. which was yeah. a, which was in my case, yeah. or they're inspired by something. Mm-hmm. So oh. I think people, as they see That's what you've done, yeah. that are at, at 81% of people in the last Gallup poll identify as being unhappy at work. Wow. 81%. That's a high number. Yeah, like 75% would change jobs just to change jobs. It's pretty, it's pretty bad. But you could inspire people that they're mm-hmm. watching about how, how change is possible. So in writing and taking your your passion and turning it into your purpose and your and your business because you made a business out of it. Yeah. So I want to I want to circle back to the book a little bit. Um, I just wanted to tell you that I think inspiring people to do what you've done, like burn burn the boats, uh, like Cortez did, is like, hey, we quit, we're going to go do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Uh, what are the what are a few things if someone were to read this book and they were married corporate couple? Because I have one question on marriage too. There's also a high amount of people that are unhappy yeah, uh, in their, in their relationship. But what what are the two or three things, if someone were to read this book, what could they expect to, to connect with and potentially implement to make that change? Mm-hmm. Well, I think that um, there are a couple of things. One is through yoga and meditation, you get an opportunity, if you're willing to practice, by the way, to do it repetitively. <clears throat> there will come a time in which you start to get to know yourself. We believe that yoga is all about relationships. So the first relationship, though, is you with yourself. Because until you really get to know yourself, it's hard to really evaluate you and your relationships with others. So through yoga on the mat, I know it sounds kind of strange, but all of a sudden, you know, like we were talking about this, these functional MRI studies and all of this and compassion and so on and so forth, all of these things start to come together and you get to understand who you are. Now, the first visit to yourself (laughs) may not be the best because you may learn some things about yourself that you need to work on. And I call those opportunities. Right. You know, I don't think of them as negatives. I think of them as opportunities. We all have an innate potential that's unlimited. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe that. We've learned this through our own practices and we put this into our own, you know, everyday life. Every day is all about the opportunity. But then from there, learning then to interrelate with the environment around you and the people around you, that's another key factor that we really emphasize in the book. It's to realize that every single thing in your life truly matters. It was a realization that we had when we were preparing to teach at a um, special yoga retreat center in the Bahamas that came to us and said, you know, there's present moment awareness 
this is what mindfulness is all about. Yeah. Yeah. But then within every moment, how you think, how you act, how you react, even if you choose not to act, that matters. So everything matters. Right. It's like the key takeaway. And so if you have this realization that everything that you do, think, or say, or feel matters, then you're empowered to make change and to uplift the moment for yourself and for others. Yeah. W. Clement Stone said, little hinges swing big doors. Uh, yeah. So yeah. That's the one thing I've noticed that yeah. in, these, uh, in my times with the classes that I've mm-hmm. been to, it's like, oh, today I learned something different. Mm-hmm. Could have been... Because uh, it's an opportunity uh, to learn about. Cause I have I have my own program called Five to Thrive, one by five to thrive. One thing in five areas of your life every day. Yeah, to thrive. And it's real simple. So this is the one thing that I could do today. I got it from the book called The One Thing by uh, Gary Keller, famous realtor. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's yeah. the one thing I can do yeah. today to most improve my body? Now, when I was three hundred fifty pounds, it was diet. Now it's I'm at the point where I'm trying to build up muscle mass. Yep. my mind. Uh, my relationships, my learning, my reading. Yeah. So it's these five things, and they all matter because you can't survive. But yoga and meditation, in many kind of times, are wrapped into the same, the same exact hour, which is yeah. hard to do. And lots of times yeah. you learn. Um, but talk, talking about, uh, uh, you know, what's next for you? Uh, I know you do retreats. I know you have a. a, a practice here in town in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, what's next for you two? Well, we do lead retreats um, overseas and here in the States, and we do a lot of teacher training weekends, so we teach people how to teach yoga, and we think that's really important because our style of yoga, what we teach, um, as you know from coming to our classes, has a message in it almost every class. There will be something that you can take away, something that um, you can do to maybe improve your own life situation. So we're teaching people how to teach yoga like we teach yoga to hopefully spread that message around. Um, we also work with corporations to bring in mindfulness to the busy professionals. So we do a lot of that, and we're probably going to be growing that portion of our business in the next year. It's very interesting because we do have a lot of corporate followers uh, just because of my background. But mm-hmm. let's pretend it's, it's one of those days you get a, a disturbing email or <laughs> you, you're, you get some bad information or you lose a bid or mm-hmm. you're just pissed off and yeah. you're out of your head. And yeah. Because I've used a couple of your techniques and uh, just these one second time self timeouts. I don't know what you call them. But, <laughs> uh, would you mind doing a, a quick exercise for for our followers? What's one thing you could do if you're feeling a little overwhelmed? An exercise yeah. uh, that could help relieve current pressure, get more present. You, you guys say. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very simple. If you want, we could do sure. something real quick here. Yeah. So let's, do it. let's just um, sit up with a straight spine and close our eyes. And the first thing you probably notice is once you remove the vision sense, you kind of take away a lot of stimuli. So then just take a deep inhale. Maybe hold that breath in for a moment. And exhale slowly through your nose. And repeat that and just watch the breath. Even though you can't see it with your eyes, you can still watch it coming in and holding it for a second. And letting it go. You'll notice just doing this a few times, and maybe even slower than this, you'll find that things get a little clearer. The pressure is not as high as maybe it was a few seconds ago. Maybe the mind's a little clearer. So just by focusing on the breath, nobody has to know you're doing this. You don't have to. Breathing in, holding, exhaling it out. You feel a little calmer, a little more peaceful. So that's just a simple technique. Hmm. That's fantastic. Well, you know, there, there's an interesting thing that happens as soon as you do this. It's been measured and documented that each one of us generates fifty to 7,000 thoughts per day. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's about a thought every second. Right. <laughs> Most of them are worthless because many of them are of the past, many of them are of the future. So this idea of just, as Kathy was guiding us through, noticing the breath, it acknowledges that our most tangible asset in present moment is our body and our breath. 
So as soon as you bring your awareness onto your breath, all of these crazy thoughts, they start to kind of disappear. They kind of melt away into the background. And as soon as you release yourself of all of these thoughts and you soften that whole experience, you relax. So it's a very simple, quick thing that you can do. Even in a corporate boardroom, you could just sit there and, you know, no one has to know. I used to do these things in the corporate, in our previous corporate lives in the corporate, you know, boardroom, and no one would know, you know. So I always made my most of my money with my mouth shut. <laughs> That's a great life. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a great, great tool. I mean, I know there's so many, and I'll close on this, uh, as I read books, um, you know, this is a book I intend to keep as a, as a more of a textbook. It's, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's, it's so many reference points in here mm -hmm. that you can go back to simple exercises. Um, so the book is Everything Matters. It's Dennis and Kathy Lang. How do they get a hold of this book if they wanted the book? Well, we have a very novel website. <laughs> Our website is yoga with Dennis and Kathy dot com. From that front page, you can click directly over to the book at Amazon, or you can just go to Amazon, and we have it available in both print version as well as digital version as well. So. Yeah, and I know you host a lot of retreats, and you're available mm -hmm. for corporate outings. Uh, some, some of our audience are, if you're in a corporation or you want to connect with yoga or you have part of yoga experience, you're brand new to the mat, uh, look up Dennis and Kathy. They've been un unbelievable uh, mentors to me in my, in my body journey. So. This is Terrence McMahon talking about recreation with Dennis and Kathy Lang.